What's up everybody, Ben here with a quick tips video on socket modeling. So here I am in Fusion 360, I've got a check socket that's a confirmed fit for Sol, but we have identified a little bit of an air pocket right at the back here. So I'm going to be showing you how to modify that today. Um, this is a digital socket that was created from a 3D scan of um, a physical cast. So we took the cast in our kitchen uh, back in November. Um, I made some corrections to it with a file, then scanned the um, plaster positive and then imported that as an OBJ quad into Fusion 360. So uh, what we have is this body resulted from that process. So that's Sol's paw. Then I modeled the socket in November and Sol's been wearing it um, every day, uh, doing sports, climbing, all sorts of things. So he's, he's put it through its paces and there haven't been really any issues with it. Aside from, at the moment, we've got like a red patch that keeps emerging here. So, uh, on the previous socket, the relief cut on the neckline, on the trim line here, was eight millimeters higher. So I've lowered that slightly and brought the um, trim line down slightly at the back. So I think there's a two millimeter drop here and an eight millimeter drop at the front, which is quite, <laughs> quite, quite noticeable, but Sol says it's very comfy. So the only part I'm working on today is at the back. So what I want to do is, having already created the bodies that I need, I'll turn off the um, positive that I need, and I'll turn off the check socket. Let's check, check socket four, we're going to be changing that to check socket five later. Test socket. And what I want to do is go back into the create space. So this was the create instance where I made the geometry. We just click edit and that takes us straight back. So any changes I make here now will change the test socket and therefore any changes then need to be labeled. So I'll change the name of the check, check socket and um, keep all my records straight as well so they don't get confused. It's a really, really important um, consideration when you're doing this is making sure you've identified what socket you're working on. Okay, so this is the spline I'm interested in. This is where the air pocket is. We have Sol's Electron on here and the condyles at the sides. I could probably come in a little bit closer around those, but today I'm just gonna work on the air pocket and then see if I can go more aggressive in a future test socket. I'm looking to try and get the new arm replaced by the end of this month, maybe sooner. So first of all, once we're in here, and the way I'm moving this around, um, I do it so easily, but it's something that beginners really struggle with. I have my thumb held down on the shift key and it's kind of paused to always just be ready to push the shift key. And then I have the middle mouse button. And when I push the middle mouse button and the shift key and just move the mouse around, I get control. So if I push the mouse forwards, it tilts that way. Pull the mouse back, it tilts that way. If I move the mouse horizontally left and right, then I spin the socket. So everything is squared up with the origin, and that is critical. You want this to be facing forward in the way that the elbow will bend. That's really, really critical. Aside from that, let's switch off the origins and get back to the modeling. So we've got it all squared up. We know we're interested in this spline, and I'm probably actually only gonna change this point this one and this one today. Now normally, if you go into, so we pick this one here, so left click on the point, right click to bring up the menu and then edit form. All right, so it would start normally in the coordinate space of world space. Okay, normally your default settings would be world space. What that means is that the um, directional arrows, handlebars, and um, everything is lined up with the origin, it's squared with it. So these two faces here will be parallel. Oh, that plane and that plane there. Turn the origin off. We want it though in local per entity. So it's now worked out where the center of mass is and I think all the arrows will point towards that central point. Right, so what we wanna do is pull this point inwards. At the moment, the left arrow is tagged, so we need to just change that so that highlight this arrow in blue. And then it asks me how much Z distance do I want to uh, change. The arrow is pointing to the right. I want the directional change to go to the left. So that needs to be a minus number. And I'm gonna do two millimeters. Okay. So that's quite aggressively only working within these four squares. I've only made a change that affects these four. There we go, I'll look at the before and after. Okay, if you work like that, you can end up getting quite lumpy features like this. So I'm going to show you another way. Control Z back, that's undone the change. 
this time I'm going to highlight it, right click, edit form, I'm going to have to select the direction that I want it to travel, and I'm going to click soft modification, and I've already um, entered two faces here, I think it was default to three, so the modification would spread itself more evenly across the surface, slightly more focused at two, and with one it's kind of almost what you get if you're not um, using soft modification. So I want that to be two. Click OK. Now, select the point again, go through the whole process. Soft modification on. Highlight that. Minus two millimeters. Also going to change this one, minus one millimeter. This one minus one millimeter. Okay, right. When you're finished, just simply come up to end this create instance and go back into normal modeling space. Finish form, and the earlier body that I'd created now appears. So if we have a look at the back now, try and hold it from the side there. And then I'm going to go back through my timeline by just repeatedly pressing Ctrl Z until I go back to the beginning. And we'll go through that again. Right, so that was the starting body. This is where the air gap was. I'm going to press Ctrl Y. Come around from the side so you can get a better idea of the changes. And then. So that's the next test socket that we're going to try and what I'll do is let's all just wander around the house putting his weight on it, putting it through its paces for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour and just see how it feels. And if that's good then we might then try to do the same thing for the condyles and come in a little bit more snug. But it's a very very in incremental process, if you want to get it right then it's, in it's a small changes at a time and keep checking because when you go to print the Vario socket that's what you're going to be doing. That could be a 9 hour print and the, exp and, and the expense of all the material as well. Your electric now that, <laughs> now that in the UK we've just got ridiculously expensive electric bills. So yeah, um, you don't you want to print the final thing once. So test sockets out of PLA take about an hour and uh, 50 minutes to two hours. So let's do that now and then when Sol gets home from school we'll compare version 5, which reminds me, change the name of the body. We need to keep version control really really important. Now the first thing I do as a matter of course is to write the number of the text socket on the bottom. Um, I used to engrave it, but it's just an extra step and I keep a marker pen next to the printer for just doing that. So this is now test socket 5, let's save that. And we'll save it as, because I keep a permanent log of all of my... So now, this is remodel 2, this is remodel 3. Success yet. Yeah. Uh, save that in Sol's file. Just go and open up uh, Simplify 3D. Oh, there is another way of doing it. I also wanted to mention on today, so I could have Test Socket 5, save as a mesh, and then it sends a 3D print utility down. If I just click on that, it will actually automatically open up Simplify 3D. There we go. So if I now click on that, it will export it quite nicely as a 3MF file into Simplify 3D. So press Ctrl and L to look at the body. And there we go, Let's. Uh, I've already got a test socket profile um, set up, so just prepare to print this and see how long it's gonna take. And then I'll dart into the back room and turn the printer on and get it all warmed up. Yep, so that's a two hour print, which means it'll easily be ready and a light sand will be given to it just before Sol tries it this evening. Yeah, so use about 12% infill, 0.3 layer, moving at 55 millimeters a second at 211 degrees C. Hello. All right, so Sol, if you could just kindly show us your paw. Now, Sol, can hand, how's the red mark? Can you come and look in front of the camera here? So look, was it red? A little bit red there, yep. A little bit red there. Right, we're going to take this test socket and put it on for us. Okay. That 
that's full. That is full, put it on. Well, it feels good to get again, but um, it's up to there. And normally I'd like up to there. Okay, try the next one then. You've got lovely rosy cheeks, so. Okay, this is number five that did today. Oh, that sounds like it's a bit tougher to get on, therefore it's... How does it feel? Good. Feels better. Feels better? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I'm seven. Lost a tooth from. Should I run your teeth now? Oh, that takes some getting into, doesn't it? Ooh, no, yeah. I, I can do it fast. Well, you don't want it going on fast, you don't want it coming off fast. Ideally, you want it to go all over the day so it snugly fits on your arm. And um, it feels actually nice. Well, there we are. You've heard it from the man himself. It's nice. As long as Sol keeps wearing this sock, he'll be fine for the next couple of weeks, but it is now a race against time to get him sorted. Join us next time when I'll be showing you how to create the final socket and attach it to the system. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and share it with everyone you see and hit the bell. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Peace out. Bye, bye, mate.